Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by energy and environment reporter Jeremy Beeman. Jeremy, we're looking at the Republicans and the Democrats. They were living in completely different worlds when it's talking about high energy prices and what to do about them. What are some of the differences that we're seeing? We're seeing completely different arguments and diagnoses being made about, about what's at root of the problem here. Uh, Democrats, uh, House Democrats just passed this, this anti-price gouging bill, which targets fuel, uh, fuel commodities in particular. There's another proposal Democrats have introduced that's just sort of broader price gouging uh, issue uh, that, that has not sort of moved yet. But, but the, the, the Democrats are really embracing this theory about prices, which is that oil companies and energy companies across the, the, the supply chain are, are, you know, taking advantage of, of consumers. Uh, and certainly Republicans and industry folks have, have disputed that, but also a lot of uh, uh, independent analysts have, have noted that it's pretty uh, intellectually tenuous uh, because just if you, if you just look at the market conditions, inflation generally, and then oil prices, all, they're, they're sort of a, a better alternative explanation to, to why prices uh, are, are so high uh, and, and really at records. We're seeing almost daily records uh, in terms of gasoline prices. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's sort of the, the th what, what Democrats have th thrown at the wall to see if it'll stick, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps with November in mind. Um, and, and meanwhile, Republicans are, are in some cases making equally um, disingenuous arguments, blaming everything on Biden. I saw one re House Republican lawmaker you know, s talking about gas prices, and he said, this is not about the, the Ukra war in Ukraine. It's very much about the war in Ukraine. Uh, that, that's the, the leading, if not the top three sort of contributing factors here um, sure. in terms of, of what's driven volatility in the oil market. Mm -hmm. So th that's sort of the dynamic at play is, is the, these competing theories. And, and again, uh, you, you have to think that both are, are, are trying to, to, um, to, to convince voters and, and to, to gain their sympathies uh, for perhaps for November and just, uh, just politics in general in the, in the meantime. Now, one Republican argument has been that the Biden administration has been bad for energy production, but there's actually some data that the Biden administration and its allies aren't really touting very much that suggests that maybe that's not entirely true. Well, it kind of goes to show that it's the in energy production world is a big machine, much mm -hmm. bigger than, than the Biden administration and much bigger than the Biden administration's reach. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, uh, I think again, the argument that, that Biden's policies, what he, he has done in the year and few months that he's been in office, have kept uh, production down mm -hmm. is, is not true. It's demonstrably, demonstrably not true. Uh, perhaps you could make, make the case, and I think it's compelling that, um, that they would, uh, you know, those policies would, would years down the line be, be limiting to production if they were, uh, if they were uh, uh, carried out, but right. they, they've even been cut off by courts and so forth. Mm -hmm. But certainly, yeah, production, oil production has, has risen by nearly a million barrels since, since Biden took, uh, took office, a million barrels per day. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's just has not, you know, it, it, again, it goes to show that, it, that his reach is sort of limited. And, right. and actually, you, Biden and, and uh, other administration officials have, have pointed to that data point. Hey, mm -hmm. production is growing to show that, hey, we're not, like, we're not restricting production. Right. Um, uh, this is not our fault, um, and, and there's some truth there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a, again, it's a complex conversation, but certainly production is up uh, and it's growing. Maybe not as fast as the market uh, demands, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and enough to to sort of bring relief. But but mm -hmm. it is growing. Production is growing. Though some of it does have to do with the Biden administration being unable to do some of the things it wants to do, either because the courts won't let them on the executive branch side or they can't get their plans through Congress on the legislative side, but they've also had to make some concessions to just the economic reality uh, with, of the high prices, and they've had to make some concessions because of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Yeah, we've talked about this frequently, you and I. Um, they, they, they've sort of pivoted and, and embraced in, uh, uh, increasing oil production, something mm -hmm. they would not have done right. lot, you know, as, or, as, as recently as uh, you know, late last summer, right. uh, just because of where conditions are now. Mm -hmm. And and with regard to Europe and and uh, the, the sort of energy crisis going on there, uh, again the administration has shifted and, and and has said over and against the preferences probably of the administration itself right. and of many environmentalists that they're going to um, to support Europe with more natural gas, and that means we're going to have to build new natural gas infrastructure, which mm -hmm. has at least the you know sort of 20-year lifespan, and and again 
These, these are things that uh, environmentalists, I mean, Democrats do not want to see. They do not want to see more fossil fuel production. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, so, so that's, that's where the administration finds itself. Uh, uh, another thing that, uh, that has sort of unfolded is the administration, we, you mentioned the court decisions. Right. The administration has, has uh, uh, you know, on a delayed timeline, carried, uh, begun to sort of carry out its duties on federal land and offshore uh, leasing uh, responsibilities. Uh, uh, Interior Secretary Deb Holland uh, announced uh, as we film this today, right. uh, that that the uh, the administration will announce uh, release its um, upcoming five-year offshore drilling plan, which sort of lays out what uh, what sales offshore that can carry out each uh, each year mm -hmm. over a five-year period. That's mm -hmm. something that usually comes much earlier. It's uh, it's going to be delayed, and so like other decisions the administration's made, they pointed to the courts uh, mm -hmm. and, and sort of said. You know, our hands being forced here. Uh, we're complying, but but they, they'd rather not do it. Right? Mm -hmm. So the Biden administration on energy is going to find itself just having to power through. Guess so. Thank you, Jeremy. You can read Jeremy's coverage and subscribe to the newsletter daily on energy at WashingtonExaminer.com.